This presentation is to show how to create an input file with the preprocessor GM Saphir, and the file will be used by Saphir for a 2D thermal analysis. When I do a model in a computer with the preprocessor, I used to make a sketch by hand, like the one you see, on which I indicate a few important numbers that I will have to enter in the computer. So what I propose to create is a T-concrete section with two reinforcing bars of 20 mm diameter with an axis distance of 40 mm. Here is GM Saphir. It's opened already. So I start here in the file menu and I indicate I want to create a new project. I have to choose the folder, an existing folder in which I will locate my files and here are the files of the model created by GM Saphir. I put them in the, the folder tutorial and I give the name to the terminal. The extension has to be .geo so I accept the suggestion and the kernel has to be open cascade. Now I will create the geometry with this menu and I will first adding elementary entities. Elementary entities are points, lines, curves, surfaces and volumes. But I will start by creating the web of my section and I have a command here which is add rectangle. And I'm asked to give the coordinates x and y of the lower left corner. In x, this is minus 0 decimal 100. The units in Saphir are in meters, so that makes 100 millimeters. And the y coordinate, I will give 0. It's important that the cursor does not get out of the window when you type in the values. If not, you see this red rectangle on the drawing window will move and the values will change here and it will be uh, complicated to come back to the value you want. So dx is the increment, so that's the width of my rectangle, that's 0 decimal 200, that's 200 millimeters. Look, you see here this value has changed, it has to be minus 100. And the increment vertically is 0 decimal 300 millimeters and I can add and I have my rectangles and now I read above what is written in the drawing window and I read I can type Q to finish this command and here is my rectangle so I skipped the definition of four points of four lines of one curve and one surface. Everything has been drawn in one step. I double click in the drawing window and I activate all geometry options. And I see here that the surfaces are not visible. So I make the surfaces visible. The surface is represented by the medians here of my surface. It's not obvious here to see the difference in the dotted line between the surface and the other lines which indicate just the positions, but the other lines will progressively disappear and make it easier. Now I'd like to create the rectangle which is the slab of my section. It is tempting, but it would be a very bad idea to use the same add rectangle command which would create the rectangle here above because the lower line of the slab would coincide with the upper line of the web, but they would coincide only visually. They would, in fact, not be the same line, and the two rectangles would not communicate with each other. The heat would not travel from one rectangle to the other one. So I need a common line here. So in that case, I will come back to the add point command, here are the coordinates of the points I have to use, and I prepare everything in my drawing. So the x co coordinate is 0 decimal 260, and the y coordinate 
of the first point is 0 decimal 300 and I add my point came here that's where I wanted it now I need another point at the same x coordinate so that's 0 decimal 260 and the y coordinate is now 0 decimal 420 I add the point okay now it seems as if the point is not where I want it so I stop and here you will see immediately a very interesting feature of GM Safir is that here I can edit the script and if I edit the script I see what has been done so far every command which is entered is immediately translated as one line in this geo file and this geo file is a NASCII file that you can open, you can edit, you can change with any text editor, but you can also change it from within GM Saphir. So I see the rectangle here where I want it with the first corner, the dx, dy. I see the label of the rectangle. I see the point 5 with the x and y coordinate as I want it. And I don't know why I made an error for the point 6. The coordinate should be here or point two six zero for the x and for the y should be o decimal four two zero right so i close the script i record and i reload the script and now you see the second point is where i wanted to have it that's a very powerful feature you will quickly use to love it so i go back to my add point command I want another point with a coordinate x which is 0 and a coordinate y 0 decimal 420. I add it. You may not understand now why I add the point here. In fact, I will need it for the torsion analysis. Now, another point is on x minus 0 decimal 260. And the y coordinate is not changing. Add. Good. Now another point with the same x coordinate and y coordinate is 0 decimal 300. Add. And I can quit the add point command. Now I will make add line command. The question is here, the suggestion is to select the start point of a first line. And I can start by any of these points, but I have to define the line in a way that going from the first point to the second point of the line, the future section is on the left. So I'm turning in a counterclockwise direction of my future section. So the start point of the next line is here. The end point is here. Start and start and start and start. And, and I can type Q. I'm done. So let's look on the label of the points. For example, you see points one, two, three, four that were created when I created the rectangles and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, I can look at the label of the curves. You see, when I created the rectangle, I had curve line one, two, three, four, and now I have lines five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's okay. And if I look at the label of the surfaces, I have only the rectangle because the lines that I created around the slab don't make it a surface. So I have to add the surface, add, plane surface, okay? And I have to select a boundary. I can select any of the lines that I have created separately because they are all described in the counterclockwise direction, but I cannot select this line, which is common to the web and the slab. Why? Because when the rectangle was created, the lines were counterclockwise, which is okay for me. But if I start describing the slab by this line, it is not counterclockwise, it is clockwise for the slab. And if the first line is clockwise, 
all the other lines will be reversed and all my lines will be used in a clockwise direction for the rectangle. And that's not what I want. I have to start by any of the other lines. I would select this, this one. And as this line is part of the future surface, the software is clever enough to understand that these lines, which are now red, must also be part of the slab. But now the software cannot guess what surface I want to describe. Will I close the surface by this line or by, this three, by these three lines? Obviously, I want to close by this. And I type E to say this is finished. And here you see my new surface. If I add the lab label of the surfaces, now I have two surfaces, right? Now I want to create my rebars. So add circle. So the center coordinate is minus zero decimal. 0, 6, 0, and the y coordinate is 0 decimal 0, 4, 0. Add. Now I forgot to give the radius. I don't want a rebar of 50 centimeter. So the radius is 0 decimal 0, 1, 0, 10 millimeters. And I want a complete circle. So angle 1 is 0, angle 2 is 2 pi. Add, oh, looks to be what I wanted. Now another one where the X coordinate, ah, look, you see, I came too close to here and I got another rebar up there. So my new coordinate X is now zero decimal zero six zero. And the Y position is zero decimal zero four zero. The radius is OK. I can add. It is where I want. And now Q to get out of this section. Now let's look at the surface labels. You see, I created two curves, but I don't have surfaces here. So I have to create surfaces. Add plane surface. Select the boundary. This is my boundary. Type E to say the surface has been defined. And you see the two medians, which indicate I have now a surface tree. I can select another boundary here, E for exit, and I have my surface number four. Now I can type Q to get out of here. Fine. Now there's something wrong, because in fact, in the web, I have plane one, which is the whole rectangle, and I have plane three and plane four, which are my rebars, but the rebars are on top of the reinforcing section. So here, in fact, I have concrete as well as steel, which is not what I want. And furthermore, the steel is completely disconnected for, from the concrete. It's not because visually speaking, I see the steel bar on top of the concrete rectangle that they are linked numerically speaking. So I have to do something. And what should I do? I will come here and use the Boolean command, and I will make a difference between different surfaces. And when you make a difference, you have to know there are three concepts that you have to understand. First is the object from which you are going to delete some part. So the object here is obviously plane one. Then you have the tool. That's the tool, that's a surface or a set of surfaces that you will use to punch in the object. And finally, a third concept is the new object that will be created. So I want to punch the rectangle plane one by the two circles, plane three and plane four. So the object will be plane one, the tool will be plane three and plane four. Now, do I want to keep the object at the end of the day. No, I don't want to keep it. I don't want to keep the complete rectangle. I just want to keep the, f the third concept that will be the punched rectangle. Do I want to delete the tool? 
I could, but then I should create again the, three, the two surfaces, the plane three and the plane four. No, let's keep the tool alive after the operation has been done. No, now I read here, I have to select the object. So I click here. Okay, it is selected. I type E to indicate I have finished the selection. Now I should select the tool. So I click here and here. And now E to indicate I finished the selection. And I think this is finished, so I can type Q to get out of here. How should I know that my operation has been successful? I will use my script editor here. So what do I see? The rectangle, the points, okay, the lines, and you see here if I add again the I double click click to add the label of the points, okay, and of the curves. I can come back to the script, and when I have the script, I see that the line 5 is from point 3 to point 5, okay, from here to here. So it's really in counterclockwise direction. It's possible to draw the direction of the line on, on, on top of it. Uh, there is a command which I don't know for the moment. Now I have my curve loop made of lines 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and minus 3. You see, it has been reversed. I have the plane surface using the loop 2. I have the two circles. I have the loop on the circle 11 and the surface 3 on base of the loop 3. I have the loop, the surface, and here is my boolean. And the boolean has been used from surface 1, which was the object, and curve 11 and 12 were the curves, which I used to delete. And now I'm not sure this is correct, because I have punched with a curve, and maybe I should punch with another surface. So because I'm not sure, I will take no risk, I delete this line, delete, save, and reload the script. Okay, so my Boolean expression has been deleted. So I will do it again. So Boolean difference, select the object, it's here. E to end the selection. Now select the tool and I will not select the curve as I did previously, but really the surface, the two surfaces. E to end the selection. Yes, delete object. I should delete the object and not delete the tool. Okay. And now E to end the selection. Q to abort. I check my script again and I go to the bottom. Okay, here Boolean between surface 1, which will be deleted, and surface 3 and surface 4, and these will not be deleted. Okay, so my third object, the one that I have created, is based on surface 1, but I have removed from this surface surfaces 3 and surface four. So I'm happy. And with this, I've created the geometry of my model.